Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Predictions with your friend and host, the Pop Culture Junkie, aka the Pro Wrestling Junkie. Today we will be discussing the predictions for this weekend's WWE WrestleMania 35, even though they don't put the numbers on them anymore. It is the 35th or number 35 WrestleMania. Get ready, it is going to be an all-day event. It is like 9 hours, 7 hours, 8, I don't know. It is going to be a long show. But we have a fully stacked card, so it should definitely be entertaining. They've had some wild and crazy moments over the last few weeks uh, to get to the build-up for this uh, whole crazy main event we have right now with the women's titles, both women's titles on the line of Ronda versus Becky versus Charlotte, and I can't wait to see that, of course. We've got some other great matches. we got the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. we got the Mae Young Battle Royal, so that'll be entertaining as well. We've got Seth Rollins challenging the Beast for the Universal title. We've got Daniel Bryan going up against Kofi Mania for the WWE title. So we got a lot of great matches on this show. It's going to be a good show no matter what. It's going to be entertaining. I'm very, very curious to see what direction they go with all the matches, though, because all the buildup has been crazy. Let's be honest. The buildup has been really odd and bizarre. Uh, you all know me. I feel like they always try too hard. They, it seems like they just want to challenge themselves. Anytime they've got something going on a great track, they say, you know what, let's pull the lever, go this way, and let's see if the fans still want to cheer or boo or whatever. So for the card itself, we have a, a total of 15 matches announced. And I've heard a lot of folks on social media complaining and uh, causing a lot of panic over this, going like, 15 matches on one pay-per-view? Are they crazy? Go back four years ago, WrestleMania 31 had nine matches. WrestleMania 32... 12 matches. WrestleMania 33, 13 matches. WrestleMania 34, 14 matches. So it seems like they are adding one match extra per year. So by that logic, next year we should have 16 matches, if not more. We'll see. I don't know. But it does, It's we see a trend. So since we have so many matches to go over to uh, share predictions on, and we've got uh, some news and rumors to cover as well, and then follow up with our fan questions, let's get to the predictions part right now. So starting off, we have the men's Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Now, this is, what, the fifth year, I believe, they've been doing it? They they kicked it off at uh, WrestleMania 30, right, when Hulk Hogan first introdu introduced it. I'm not exactly what to think sometimes, because I really was excited when they first announced this whole uh, matchup as an annual event. It kind of took the place of Money in the Bank, because they made Money in the Bank its own standalone pay-per-view, which I'm fine with. Uh, we get to see a couple of Money in the Bank matches now at the same show, because we have a men's and women's now. But I was always enjoying the idea that you get to see a ladder match at Mania every year for a while there. And uh, I got to see at WrestleMania 25, I saw the Money in the Bank ladder match where CM Punk won for the second time. But now we have the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and now, of course, we have the Women's Battle Royal as well, which is totally fine. So we get two Battle Royals, and those have been announced to be on the kickoff show. So uh, we have a two-hour kickoff show. <laughs> get ready for that. Uh, so, of course, kickoff will be where they... Uh, do all the highlights and promos and such, and then we get the Battle Royals. So, starting off, Men's Andre the Giant Battle Royal. I'm going to read off the people that have been uh, posted on here so far that will be participating. We've got EC3, Tucker, Otis, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Shelton Benjamin, Ali, Andrade, Connor, Victor, Rhino, Heath Slater, Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, Lentz Dorado, Grand Metal League, Kalisto, Chad Gable, Bobby Roode, No Way Jose, Jinder Mahal, Tyler Breeze, Titus O'Neil, Apollo Crews, Colin Jost, and Michael Shea. Those are the Saturday Night Live guys. And Braun Strowman. So one thing I want to point out, it seems like with all the matches they have for this show, they've been putting a lot of focus on the Battle Royal this year. Okay, A couple times in a row now for the past, past few years, it seems like, okay, it's going to happen and they'll do a little build-up. Or they'll do a little, uh, like an eight-man tag match on uh, Raw or SmackDown, and then they'll have everyone just start eliminating each other over the top rope, mock Battle Royal style, even though it's not a Battle Royal. And we've seen a lot of build-up now, especially because of Braun Strowman and the uh, two Saturday Night Live actors. So I expect to see some hijinks of some sort. I mean, the, the lock pick for most people is Braun Strowman. I can see them swerving us because uh, they haven't done a great job with Braun anyway. So I don't think it's going to be Braun Strowman. A lot of people will bet on Strowman. I am going to go with an odd choice, and I'm going to say... EC3. Why not? Okay, let's just see if they can pull out something to help him out, because ever since they brought him to the main roster, they've done nothing with him. So, how about EC3? I'm going to go with that. All right, then we have the Women's WrestleMania Battle Royal, and the participants announced so far are Dana Brooke, Mickey James, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Asuka, Carmella, Naomi, Lana, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Selena Vega, and Nikki Cross. And sadly, I mean, uh, Asuka was challenging the 
title last year at Mania. She won the Rumble last year, the very first Women's Rumble. Now she's in the kickoff show Women's Battle Royal. It's so tragic. Ugh. She needs to win. Okay, she needs to win something, so she needs to be the winner. And that's my pick to win this. Who do I think they're going to end up having? I would not be surprised if they have Lana, Carmella, uh, maybe one of the Riot Squad. But I'm going to say Asuka. I want Asuka to win, so I'm picking Asuka. All right, let's go on to the main card. We've got the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way because we have to get everyone we can on this show. The champions, the Usos, challenged against Ricochet and Aleister Black, the bar of Cesaro and Sheamus, and Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. I don't think Ricochet and Aleister Black were going to get the titles here. I, I'm glad they're on the show. It's going to add a lot of entertainment to the match itself, and so I am looking forward to this. You have... A, a ring full of guys that are going to put on a, a spectacle show if they can, you know, get the time to do it. Uh, but my pick, I'm going to say Shinsuke and Rusev. Why not? Give them a push. Okay, you put them together in this uh, new tag team, give them a push. Uh, I'm going with Shinsuke and Rusev. All right, next up we have the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match, also a Fatal 4-Way. We have the Boston Hood connection of Bailey and Sasha versus Beth Phoenix and Natalya versus the Iconics. And versus Nia Jax and Tamina. Tamina and Nia Jax, I don't get this. They've had title shots. They don't even need to be in this match. I think they should have been put into the Women's Battle Royal, to be honest. Uh, I would have been fine with Iconics versus Beth Phoenix and Natalya versus the Boston Hug. At least have a triple threat. But uh, yeah, Nia and Tamina just do not belong in this matchup. I am going to go with Bailey and Sasha retaining. I don't think they're going to drop the titles yet. But who knows? But that's my pick. All right, next up we have Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Odd to see Roman Reigns in a, in a lower card match, right? Because he's been put in the main event for the last like three, four years now. Uh, so that is a little bit refreshing, but we'll get to that later. So Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I mean, are they really going to have Roman lose his first big match, big one-on-one -on -one matchup since he came back from his illness? I hope so, because I'm picking Drew McIntyre, because Drew needs a win. So I'm picking Drew McIntyre. But I predict that it's probably going to be Roman. Come on, you know, always bet on Roman because they pretty much always, you know, put Roman over. Next up, we have the WWE Intercontinental title match. Bobby Lashley defending against Finn Balor. And we already know as of Monday that Finn Balor will be bringing his demon character, which I really wish they had not spoiled that. Just, you know, just have it be Finn Balor versus Bobby Lashley. Have Lashley come out to the ring and be ready for the fight. And then all of a sudden, here comes the music and the pirate. Just have everything go off. Uh, whatever kind of awesome entrance they put together for the demon entrance, it could, it's going to be an amazing entrance, I'm sure. But they took away the element of surprise, and that's what the audience craves. That's what I crave. I want the surprise uh, in wrestling. That's what I always like. I'm going to go with Finn Balor. They're not going to have him come out as a demon and then lose, so he's going to win the title, I hope. All right, next up we have the WWE United States title match, Samoa Joe defending against Rey Mysterio. Yes, there are some rumors, and we'll get to that later in the uh, news and rumors section. Uh, but as far as here, I'm going with Samoa Joe. Uh, whether or not uh, Dominic Ray's son plays any kind of role in this or not, he may be sitting front row, and Joe may try to attack his, you know, his son at some point. But I'm going to go with Samoa Joe. He needs to retain and continue on a on a good title run. All right, then we have AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. This was kind of a just thrown together match just to get the two guys on the card. I did enjoy the Kevin Owens show segment on SmackDown this past week. I really like that, you know, they're starting to allow people to talk more real about, you know, things that we all know. Like, okay, when uh, Orton tried to be all like, oh, you're just an indie guy. And, you know, instead Styles is like, yeah, well, you know, while I was wrestling in bingo halls, you were here in the WWE failing drug tests. It's like, yeah, a lot of people ignore that or they've covered it up really well that Orton has a you know drug history and uh, has failed a lot of uh, wellness exams and actually technically should not even be employed because of the amount of times he's failed things and gotten away with things. But that's the other thing I don't like though is that they basically make fun of it like haha he's 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 failed our wellness fa you know policy but he still works here. It's like uh, okay you've. You've terminated other people for lesser things, but yeah, whatever. Sadly, because it's WrestleMania, I'm predicting it's going to be Orton that they're going to have go over, but AJ Styles should get the win here. So I want Styles to win. All right, next up we have a Falls Count Anywhere match. Shane McMahon versus The Miz. I'm looking forward to this one. They're going to basically tear the whole place apart, and I can't wait to see. Hopefully they really take advantage of the Falls Count Anywhere. It needs to go 
up into the stands, up into the arena, uh, backstage, go outside to the street. I mean, when's the last time, hello, go back to 1999 when Al Snow and Harpo Harley fought all the way out into the Mississippi River, okay? I want something like that again. So hopefully they really take advantage of this false count anywhere stipulation. Uh, but the winner, I'm going to say Miz, because Shane doesn't really win at Mania usually. So Miz is going to win. Now we have the retirement match. Not Okay, not a stipulation, but this is being advertised as Kurt Angle's last match. So this is his farewell match. Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. I really, really hope somewhere in the card, somewhere in the match or somewhere in the show, Corbin gets taken out or Angle's out at the in the ring and waiting for his opponent to come out and someone else's music hits. Do, 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 do. Okay, somebody. It doesn't matter. It could be Cena. It could be anybody. I don't want to see him fight Corbin. It's just a waste of a match. I really don't understand why they have... Uh, really just buried Kurt Angle's farewell uh, to in the ring here. But, yeah, so we have Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. And, I mean, long-time uh, policy is you go out on your back and, you know, you don't uh, you don't win your last match. Look at uh, Ric Flair, you know, WrestleMania 24 against Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels retired Flair, and Flair lost. I mean, of course, he went on to wrestle in TNA and so forth. But, anyway, Kurt Angle, uh, I want him to win. He should not put over Baron Corbin. Does not deserve the win, so... I'm picking Kurt Angle, unless, for some reason, we get a different challenger, then who knows what's going to happen. But, either way, I still think Kurt Angle deserves to win. He deserves to go out on top. All right, then we have the WWE Cruiserweight title match, Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese. Uh, oh, I believe this is going to probably be on the kickoff show as well, right? It should, but uh, Buddy Murphy, okay? I, I don't follow 205 Live that much, but... Uh, I'm sure the match will be fun, so I'm going to pick Buddy Murphy. Then we have the No Holds Barred match, Triple H versus the returning Drax, or Batista. <laughs> this matchup has been really odd. I love the the memes and the gifts that people have been making off of uh, Batista with the spitting on the mic and give me what I want, what I really what I want. Uh, I mean, I love that. The match will be good. I mean, it's going to be fun, and it's a No Holds Barred, so it had to be. I mean, Triple H got injured, and I didn't even think he was going to make it to Mania. Uh, after uh, his injury at uh, Crown Jewel. So, very surprised that he's going to be wrestling at all. And the weapons being involved and all the props and whatever, uh, that's going to help out because otherwise this would be a very boring match. But it's very odd. Do they have Batista come back after five years after the very bad run he had when he came back at re around WrestleMania 30? And then do they have him come back just to lose a match to Triple H? That's it? Triple H, he can take the loss. I mean, have Batista win. Hello, you still have Avengers Endgame coming out soon. Wouldn't you want to be like, hey, look at this. Batista, you know, dominated Triple H, and now go see Endgame, even though that movie already has made like half a million or half a billion dollars on pre-sale tickets. But either way, I, I don't see any reason for Triple H not to put over Batista. So I'm picking Batista, but I think it's going to probably be Triple H. Because the whole thing is Triple H has never beaten Batista. So, and he never got to beat The Undertaker, and he finally got to do that last year. So, there we go. <laughs> okay, then we have the WWE title match, Dana Bryan defending against Kofi Kingston. I'm looking forward to this match because I'm a big fan of both, but I don't think Kofi should win. I know a lot of people are going to be against that, but I don't think Kofi should win here. I think uh, Big E should either be ringside and cause some kind of distraction, interference, whether by uh, purpose or accident, something uh, to plant the seeds to eventually finally break up the New Day and just have the three of them fight, feud all the way through the summertime, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I want to see Brian retain, actually. I want to see him retain the title at WrestleMania. So I'm picking Dana Bryan to retain. We'll see. Next up, we have the WWE Universal title match. Brock Lesnar, the Beast, defending against the 2019 Royal Rumble winner, Seth Rollins. My pick is Brock Lesnar is going to retain. Yes, I'm picking Lesnar to retain. Uh, I'm not sure where they're going to go from here after this. I hope, hope, hope they don't go straight to a Roman Reigns versus Lesnar. There's no reason to ever go back to that anytime soon, ever. But I'm picking Brock Lesnar is going to retain the title. Main event, the final match of the night. For the first time ever, we have an all-women's main event matchup. Winner takes all because we have Ronda Rousey defending the Raw Women's title versus Charlotte Flair defending the SmackDown Women's title versus Becky Lynch, the man. So triple threat match. Anything goes. No rules. No DQ. No count out. Anything goes. This match should be amazing and awesome, and I am so looking forward to it. So I am very excited and very excited for it. My pick, though, is going to be 
Becky Lynch getting the win and holding up both titles. Will they swerve us? Hey, they swerved us last year with Brock Lesnar going over Roman. Everyone thought that was the lock of the century of Roman Reigns winning the title. And then they swerved us and Roman retained. It would not surprise me one bit if all of a sudden uh, Ronda gets the win somehow, whether it's a submission or pin, and she is holding both titles because, again, they're going to be like, look, the main celebrity of the whole show, she's got the titles and everything. It's going to get us mainstream, whatever. That's, you know, the reason. But I'm going with Becky Lynch. She needs to win. She needs to get... I mean, what's the whole point of all this? What was the point of all this? Uh, screwing her over, giving her, you know, many you know, all these different obstacles to go through to get to WrestleMania and not win. So, yes, Becky Lynch needs to win, get both titles, and... I'd say just unify them, okay? Just go ahead and unify them. You only have one women's tag title. Unify the men's titles eventually. Have uh, Dana Bryan go against Lesnar again or whatever. And hopefully in that situation, Bryan would win just so we have a title for a while. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm going with Becky Lynch getting the win here. And uh, who knows? Chances are we're going to see uh, Sasha and Bayley come out afterwards and the three of them all hold up their title belts and the four horsewomen. You may have Charlotte standing outside the ring looking sad or whatever because she's still part of the Four Horsewomen, but I don't see them. I hope, hope, hope they don't have the match end. Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte all hug and embrace. God, no. Please don't do that. And then on top of that, please don't have Charlotte and Becky shake hands and embrace. No, that would kill all the heat and the the rivalry that they've been building up over the past six months. No, just no. <laughs> so my, my pick is Becky wins. She's on the turnbuckle holding both titles. Pyro goes off, confetti, whatever they want to do. And then she turns around and there's Bailey and Sasha. And the three of them all hold up their championships together. And then the show goes off the air. There we go. That's it. That's a simple way to end the show. And everyone will be happy. All right, folks. Let's get to some news and rumors now. Rey Mysterio posted on Instagram a slow motion clip from Monday uh, following rumors that he was injured. He quoted, Suffered an injury on my right ankle this past Monday night on Raw against Baron Corbin, praying to be ready for WrestleMania this Sunday. So we do know there's going to be a possibility of a substitution happening with that matchup, possibly. We haven't had any other updates yet. They do have plenty of people on the roster. They've got tons of uh, men available in the uh, Battle Royal that could do double duty that night. So who knows? We may see a different challenger for Samoa Joe and the U.S. title. Uh, hopefully they still have a match. I don't want to just scrap the match entirely. There's plenty of options where they can go. Uh, there's still the rumor that Cena may show up and do something, so he could always show up. I'd love that. That'd be a great match, but I don't think Cena needs to win the U.S. title. He's busy in Hollywood, so whatever. But yeah, there are possibilities that they can uh, do with this if they need to switch out Ray with somebody else. WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross has officially signed with All Elite Wrestling to be on their commentary team. Ross has signed a three-year deal as a senior advisor. And he will make his first in-ring appearance for AEW at Double or Nothing on May 25th at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. So very good news for AEW. They've got one of the greatest, if not the greatest, commentary man in history on their team now. So very good. That's a very good win for them. And looking forward to more. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what comes from here now. In an interview with CBSSports.com, Triple H commented on China going into the WWE Hall of Fame as a member of D-Generation X. Triple H said, it's awesome. I'm thrilled for her as the human being that I knew for her family and for her sister who I knew. There is probably not a woman who has ever made as big an impact as she did. Somebody that transcended the business on her own and I'm sure will be in the Hall of Fame sometime on her own. I think it's fitting she is in there with DX in the beginning because it's how she started. And I think it's how or it's what it should be. It says, I'm thrilled that it's this year, partly because finally the time has passed where everything can just happen and it can be right for her where the moment of putting her in the Hall of Fame for this manner is about her accomplishments and not about anything else. That was always my bigger point of this. You can't do it when the negative becomes the conversation. The conversation needs to be about her accomplishments and what she did here. Here's the thing. No one is giving a rat's ass about anything she did following WWE. No one cares. The people who have cared, Hunter, Stephanie, Vince, etc. They are the ones that had the big stick up their backside about, well, you know, if you go on Google and you type in her name, you're going to see some stuff. Yeah, guess what? You go on Google and you type in a whole bunch of wrestlers' names that are in the Hall of Fame, you're going to find a whole bunch of things you ain't going to like either. And you're going to see more things from people that are currently on the roster that you're not going to like either. Okay? I can name off a bunch of people that are currently on the show 
that you don't want to know about outside of the ring, <laughs> okay? There's a lot of things that people have done, whether it was, you know, legal or not legal. And, and again, what did China do? Honestly, she's not done anything illegal that they're referring to. What they're referring to is that after she was forced out of her job in 2001 because Triple H was sneaking around behind her back with Stephanie McMahon in real life, okay, by the way, yes, they are now married and they have a family, but Triple H was dating China. Then he started fooling around with Stephanie McMahon behind her back, and then some politics got in the way, and China was out of a job. And who, who wanted to work there after you got uh, cheated on and, you know, treated that way? Who wants to work in a place like that? Very challenging, right? And yeah, so of course, that definitely had an emotional and psychological effect on her. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't be affected that way? And what did China do? She went off and did other things, other projects, and she is a star. She was already a star at that time. She took her star and made it a name for herself in other areas. And what did she do? She went into the adult industry. Who cares? Okay? She was an adult. She could make that choice and do whatever she wants. There are female wrestlers that have participated in that same industry prior to going into WWE. There's women that are currently on the roster that were featured in men's magazines or men's websites or whatever for that contained heavy adult content. And there's women that are currently in the employment of WWE that have had leaked stuff all over the internet of adult content, very graphic adult content, mind you. So who cares, okay? China deserves an independent solo entry into the Hall of Fame. Of course, the Hall of Fame is just a TV show. There is no physical structure. There's not like a baseball Hall of Fame, a rock and roll Hall of Fame, where you can go in and see all these accomplishments put up on the wall. But yes, she deserves what she contributed to the business. She deserves her own entry into the Hall of Fame, uh, just like other men and women have before her. And finally, on an episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, which airs on HBO, the host gave a very entertaining and informative segment about WWE's treatment of in-ring performers. Topics mentioned were how wrestlers are labeled as independent contractors, yet they are not allowed to work for other companies. In addition, how stars should be provided with medical insurance and pensions. Finally, he also discussed the importance of WWE implementing an off-season very good segment, a must-watch. I highly recommend you all go out and, and watch that. Uh, if you don't have HBO, you don't watch his show regular, just go on uh, YouTube. That's where I saw it. I don't have HBO either. So I saw it on YouTube, and uh, my wife sat with me to watch it. It's about a 20-minute uh, segment. Very entertaining and very funny at times, but it does hit a lot of really important topics that really should be addressed because you look at the... Uh, the abuse that wrestlers put on their bodies for our entertainment and the fact that they don't have insurance once they're you know out of the business you know whatever money they were able to save up is what they have to rely on they do have their uh, other options where they can go out to do signings and whatnot but if your body is beat up and broken down you know you you are putting your whole body on the line every time you go out to that ring there's numerous wrestlers who just went out to a regular match, and then unfortunately, when they you know went out there, something happened to where they never could wrestle again. They could never walk again. There's you know a lot of tragedies, and on top of that, there's no off season, so your body is a banged up mess after you've been on the road for 300 days out of the year, and uh, you have to be on you know multiple TV shows, house shows, pay per views, etc. Then you still did your live show appearances and your signings. So the wrestlers, of course, they go through a lot and. At the end, what are they left with? They, you know, they deserve, uh, just like other sports athletes out there, have uh, options out there to uh, look forward to if they need something to help them out with injuries or later on with retirement. In addition, all this abuse leads to the whole substance abuse issue as well. Why do you need to turn to all the alcohol and drugs and painkillers? Because your body is so banged up and beat up, you, you have to rely on this because you don't have any other options. And that's where it just snowballs. So yes, I think an off-season is highly needed. Highly needed. Why not? WrestleMania is the blow-off show for storylines. That's what it used to be. That's what it should be. So following WrestleMania, I think, bam, the next like two months off or month off. Or take a month off for all the guys and girls that were on the show and then bring up new talent and work on those new talents for the next four to six weeks and then bring in slowly back the other talent and, you know, 
let them all work together. Something like that. Who knows? But it needs to be done. It's it's way past overdue. And now let's go to some fan questions. Kevin Hagas, do you think it would be better to stop the brand split and bring the shows together? Absolutely, yes, because it makes no sense. You already have Becky Lynch showing up on Raw, Samoa Joe on Raw. Uh, you have uh, Charlotte showing up on SmackDown and Raw. I mean, you have all these uh, superstars showing up on both shows anyways. And then on the pay-per-views, they're all on the same show again. It makes no sense. Don't even... No, I'm, I don't want another... Raw versus SmackDown, Survivor Series matchup, nothing like that again. Just, yeah, just end it, okay? Combine the titles. One women's title, one women's tag title, one men's tag title. You can keep the U.S. and IC title, that's fine. you got a big enough roster where you need, uh, you know, a handful of title belts, and then just one title belt. Get rid of that universal title belt, okay? It means nothing. It's, it's been around for, what, four years? Barely. It's had uh, how many champions that are actually re on the main roster full-time employees? You had Kevin Owens and Finn Balor, and that's it. Uh, or I guess Roman Reigns now, but yeah, you've had what Lesnar, Goldberg. Okay, get get off it, okay? Yeah, move on. Uh, he also asked, also, uh, who would be your choices as next champions in any division? Well, I had high hopes for Sanity, and I still hope they can uh, turn them around. So I'd like to see Sanity get a run at the uh, tag titles on uh, whichever show. I know they're on SmackDown, but I'd like to see that. EC3, I have high hopes for if he can get a push and not just be, you know, put in the back to look like the narcissist staring at a mirror. Uh, yeah, Ricochet and Aleister Black, if they fully are going to be coming onto the main show, uh, then yeah, I want to see either one of those go for uh, IC and US titles and then eventually to the main titles. So those are, you know, some picks right there. Nikki Cross as well. She is so underused on the main roster. Uh, it's a, been an underwhelming <laughs> debut for her. Uh, but yeah, she also uh, has a lot to offer and I'd like to see her get a, a title run as a women's champion. Josh Floberg asks, what match are you looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to the main event, may, the main match of the uh, Triple Threat uh, women's Triple Threat match. I'm also looking towards uh, Miz and Shane, uh, Kofi and Daniel, and I'm curious to see what they do with Brock Lesnar and uh, Seth Rollins. So uh, I don't know if the match is going to be that stellar, but I'm curious to see what the outcome will be. Uh, his choice is uh, Orton versus Styles. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'm not... I, all of you know, I'm not a fan of Orton at all, and I know Styles can make anyone look good, so that'll make the match good. To me, I compare AJ Styles all the time to Shawn Michaels. He could have a match with a broomstick, and it'll be entertaining. So, yeah, it'll still be a good match. And do you think the New Day will cost Kofi the title at Mania? I hope so. I hope that's the direction they're going here. It doesn't make sense to me for Kofi to just to go over Daniel Bryan clean, and then on SmackDown... They do some kind of title celebration, Kofi Kingston, first ever African-American champion, and so forth, and then all of a sudden, they turn on him. Just, no, just do it at Mania. Do it at Mania. That'll make a bigger statement, bigger point. Figure Scooper asks, discuss uh, what match outcome would upset fans most, the women's, Kofi Mania, or Lesnar? Uh, it's kind of a toss-up. I think uh, the women's matchup would definitely offend a lot of people with uh, if they were to have like Charlotte win, which I think that would be the worst decision, is to have Charlotte win both titles since they were already upset that they had her uh, beat Asuka just a week ago. So I think that might be the one that upsets fans the most. But I think also, yeah, it's kind of hard to wonder how people are going to react to Kofi versus Brian. But I think that's, again, why you need Brian to go over, because he's already a bad guy. He's getting heat every week anyways. This would give him even more heat. Something, okay? I think, uh, but yeah, I think the women's title matchup will might be a little bit more. Samantha S. the outcome of Drew McIntyre's career after WrestleMania if he wins his match against Roman Reigns. Uh, obviously, there's talk already about Drew McIntyre versus whoever's the Universal Champion. We've already seen Seth Rollins against Drew McIntyre several weeks on Raw in the past few months now. And just by having him with the title doesn't add any more flair to it. The match will be good, but unless you're going to have McIntyre dominate Rollins right away and drop the belt only you know a few weeks later at the next pay-per-view... Uh, I don't think they need to put him in that kind of uh, matchup yet. I would like to see Drew go for the IC title. Maybe uh, Finn Balor wins the title at uh, WrestleMania. Drew challenges and wins the IC title and just tears through all the mid-cards and uh, some upper guys and whatnot. Maybe even uh, Roman challenges uh, McIntyre again at the next pay-per-view for the IC title and Drew just dominates him, okay? Something like that. Build it, though. I think that could be a great matchup either Lesnar or Rollins defending against McIntyre at SummerSlam. I, I'd like to see that. And DJNasty.com asks, does Ricochet and Black win the tag titles? I'm still not even sold on the fact or not if they're actually on the main roster, like permanently. 
Uh, I know we had Bailey and Sasha show up at NXT with their tag titles saying, hey, we're going to uh, offer challenges to anyone. NXT, SmackDown, Raw, whatever. So I don't know. Does that mean if uh, Black and uh, Ricochet win the tag titles at Mania that they still show up at NXT shows every week or at the next TakeOver and they're like, hey, we got these SmackDown tag titles. Let's chat. Let's uh, you know defend them at this pay-per-view as well as the TakeOver show or whatever. I don't know. I'm still not even sold on that, that they're actually part of the main, main roster permanently or not. I don't know if this is just a temporary thing or not. Uh, because they still keep on showing up on NXT, but that could just be because they had uh, NXT shows recorded already, and they don't, uh, you know, they record a bunch of shows at once sometimes. So yeah, I don't know. I'm up, I'm curious, but I still think uh, Rusev and Nakamura are gonna get the win at the uh, at WrestleMania. All right, guys and gals, thank you so much for your questions. Remember, follow along with me on Twitter, Pop Culture Junk Two. I'll be live tweeting all through WrestleMania. It's gonna be a long show, but it's gonna be entertaining. It's gonna be fun. I can't wait. I'm excited. Share with me in the comments. Your picks. Who do you think is going to win what match? What do you think is going to happen? Where are we going to go from here? What's going to happen following WrestleMania? Do you see any big, major surprises happening at the show itself? Do you see any kind of big twists or swerves? Let me know. Share with me your thoughts. And remember, again, to follow along with me on Twitter, Pop Culture Junk 2. I will be posting my spoilers, results, and recap show later on that evening following the long marathon that WrestleMania will be. But if you want to send me any questions or topics on Twitter, I'll be posting uh, a tweet so you can reply to that and give me any questions or topics to bring up in the recap video. And uh, as well, just follow me on Twitter and we'll be talking about the whole show as it's happening. Tomorrow night is NXT TakeOver. I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be an amazing show as well. Gargano versus Adam Cole, two out of three falls match for the NXT vacant NXT title. God, I cannot wait. That's going to be an awesome matchup. And I will, of course, be live tweeting during NXT TakeOver as well. So if you want to check out NXT TakeOver and uh, follow along with me and talk to me right then and there with what's uh, happening, do so. If you get to go to WrestleMania and you're going to New York and uh, New Jersey and whatnot, have a blast, be safe, and uh, make sure you just have a great time because WrestleMania is an awesome experience. I've been to one. I hope to go again, but it's an amazing experience. I highly recommend every wrestling fan does at least once in their lifetime because it is a fun experience no matter what. No matter what the card, you're going to have a great time. All right, have a great day, great weekend. Talk to you all later. This is PCJ, the Pro Wrestling Junkie, the Pop Culture Junkie, and I'm signing out. Yeah. <laughs>